Good afternoon. My name is Yvonne Courtney, and I've been a resident of the town of Mashpee since the 1970s. And this afternoon, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce the community to State Senator Julian Sear. And um, he is now running for re-election, uh, and the election is going to be taking place in November 6, and I hope people will go out and vote. So, uh, Yvonne, Sen great to be with you. Thank Same you for here. having me. Good. It's good uh, to see you again. Thank you. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your background so that people learn m more about you? So I'm Julian Sear. Uh, I'm, I'm the current state senator for the Cape and Islands District. So the district includes, uh, encompasses Mashpee all the way out to Provincetown and then Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and I'm serving in my first term. I was born and raised in the Cape. Uh, I grew up in Truro. My family owned a, a seasonal restaurant in Truro. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I spent most all of my summers, you know, waiting on tables, working behind the line. Uh, got involved in politics actually uh, when I was in high school, uh, and uh, led a student-led effort to uh, ensure quality education, funding of quality education in the Nauset schools. Uh, and I've always been drawn to, to public service and public policy since. Um, you know, in in the in these past two years, we've been focusing on, we have two-year terms in, in the Senate here in Massachusetts. Uh, I'm one of 40 members in the body. Uh, I'm the youngest member, actually, currently of the body. Uh, but there's, there's, a, there's several millennials, actually, who've been elected. Uh, but we've been focusing on uh, working to stem, stem the opiate epidemic, uh, bring resources back here for the big wastewater challenges we face, uh, have a pretty honest assessment and be prepared for a changing climate. Uh, and then always kind of focus on how do you stand up for small businesses, how do you get support for, for quality education. Okay, what do you, th and you've accomplished quite a bit for a uh, newly elected uh, state senator. Could you tell us some of the things that you're very proud of that you were able to accomplish in this past uh, session? So when I ran in 2016, uh, I said that I could hit the ground running and deliver results for the district. Uh, and I think we've done just that. Uh, so when it comes to the opiate epidemic, uh, we've secured uh, $160,000 this fiscal year uh, that's going uh, to Cape communities. It's going to the Mashpee Police Department to help them buy purchase bulk Narcan uh, to help folks who are struggling with the epidemic. $50,000 uh, to do prevention work in our schools. Uh, and I also was a pretty big contributor to legislation that we passed uh, and was signed into law uh, around the epi epidemic, most importantly mandating that uh, emergency, de emergency departments provide, uh, must provide treatment to those struggling with addiction, uh, and they have to have what's called a warm handoff, right? You can't just have someone come in, mm -hmm. hold them for an hour or two, and, and then let them back out. Uh, so that's real significant. Uh, on the wastewater front, which is one of the biggest challenges we face, you know, Cape Cod has a $4 billion price tag for the wastewater problem that we have. Uh, and currently, there was no sort of meaningful state support to get that done. Uh, so that those $4 billion were going to be paid for by property taxpayers. Uh, my legislation uh, establishes a billion dollars in revenue that will come to each of the Cape communities, uh, including here in Mashpee, uh, for wastewater. We create a, a Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund, which is a subset of the existing state uh, program. Uh, so that's really significant. Uh, and then also, you know, I've worked to, to stand up and to support first responders, uh, firefighters, police. Uh, I'm actually going to be named uh, later this week, I'm, I'm named as Legislator of the Year by the Massachusetts Police Association, uh, which is really something I'm, I'm very proud of. I think I'm the only, only freshman to have gotten that award. Uh, and that's because we, uh, I led the effort to pass uh, $10 million uh, in resources that are going to annually go to municipal police training. Uh, to make sure that police and first responders have the training they need to be successful. Uh, local chiefs have called this the, uh, the most significant piece of action we've taken on Beacon Hill to support police since 2006. Uh, so I'm really proud to have gotten that done. And then, you know, education, uh, which I know is near and dear to your heart as a, as a retired teacher. Uh, I led the effort in the Senate to uh, expand the state reimbursement uh, for special education costs. So what's called the special education circuit breaker okay. uh, is now at a 75% reimbursement for, so for every dollar that uh, Mashi Public Schools spends in special education, the state is now gonna reimburse 70, 75 cents of that. That's um, Which is yeah. also important. So, so you know, a, a lot, of, lot of good things we're able to get done. Still plenty of work. 
left to do. Yeah, I, I know that you are on many different committees, so could you share with us some of the committees that you're on? And for a newly elected senator, I mean, it's amazing that you were able to actually be on these different committees that are <laughs> so, important. So I, I chair the, uh, the Joint Committee on Community Development and Small Business. Mm -hmm. So this is oversight over zoning. Uh, which is which is a big you know concern down here, uh, but also small business. Uh, and as someone who you know got my start in in mm -hmm. in a small business, you know working working like most Cape Codders do, right? In our in our many Cape Codders do in our hospitality industry, um, and so have worked on numerous efforts there. Uh, most recently, I have been trying to get um, a hardship waiver for small businesses and seasonal businesses from some health insurance costs that the state has passed on to those businesses. Uh, I'm the vice chair of the uh, Arts, Culture, and Tourism uh, Committee, which is quite important given right. this is our bread and butter here. Right. Uh, I'm also the vice chair of the Elder Affairs Committee. Uh, so I've really sunk my teeth into um, you know, understanding and, and, and being an advocate for uh, policy for older adults. Uh, worked a lot on home care issues. Uh, which is really important. Uh, yeah. We also passed a pretty significant Alzheimer's bill, uh, which is now going to require that all providers in the Commonwealth have training to respond, um, to, to, to notice and identify and talk about Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I serve on committees with jurisdiction in public health, housing, uh, municipalities, environment, and natural resources, and agriculture, and then children and families and people with disabilities. Oh. That's quite a quite a large number of committees. I don't know how you're able to. And I know you frequently visit all of your different districts, and you're very visible, and people appreciate having an opportunity to. We talk really to try. You. So the district's 20 towns. So yes. you know, Mashpee out of Provincetown, and then the six towns in Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and then actually the Elizabeth Islands are in the district. So that's yeah, the that's the smallest town in the Commonwealth. Um, actually, I traveled with Dylan Fernandez, who's the rep. Uh, there was a, they have a, a, a one-room schoolhouse with two students, uh, and, and one of them had their eighth grade graduation, and so tra traveled out there, and uh, try, try to be in, in all parts of the district, I think it's really yeah, important. Yeah, but it's important that you visit the, the district, but also you travel back and forth to the Boston, and I think, I don't know how many people would like to commute to Boston every day. <laughs> Luckily, so I, I don't have to be up in Boston <laughs> as much as I, I thought I would. Mm -hmm. Usually, when we're in session, uh, we'll meet in, in what's called a caucus on, on Wednesdays, so, the, so Democratic Senate sort of meet, have a lunch, uh, sort of determine the agenda, uh, and then on, on Thursday we're typically in formal session. Um, but otherwise, I, I'm, I'm here in the district, uh, whether it's home on the Outer Cape uh, or, or, or anywhere else in, in the district. Yeah. I, I also want to mention the fact that you received some significant endorsements. So could you share that information with us, um, some people who are supporting you? So we it? haven't, um, you know, so much of the work that we do in Beacon Hill relies on municipal leaders, uh, you know, muni towns implementing uh, that work. Uh, and so much of what our towns want to do uh, has to flow through Beacon Hill and just the way our, our constitution mm -hmm. and our government is structured. Uh, so I have endorsements from uh, selectmen uh, and assembly members and town councilors uh, in every town uh, in my district, uh, all 20 of them, uh, including here in Mashpee, uh, <laughs> support from the select board. Uh, and then um, President Obama uh, endorsed me, actually. I was the only, only incumbent legislator in Massachusetts uh, to receive President Obama's endorsement. Uh, I had worked, I was fortunate to intern at the, at the White House and, and work on his campaigns. Um, and then uh, Attorney General Maura Healy, our entire congressional delegation, uh, Representative Dylan Fernandez, Representative Sarah Peek, uh, and then a whole host of entities that you know, have been partners with me in our work uh, from the Mass Teachers Association, uh, 1199 SEIU, uh, you know, Environmental League of Massachusetts, the Sierra Club, uh, again, uh, you know, the, the support from the Mass Police Association, uh, and again, this, this award as Legislator of the Year, which I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of, you know, one, I'm, I'm humbled to receive, mm -hmm. uh, and also, two, I think it's just, you know, more importantly, that we you know, got something done, this, this municipal police training bill, uh, was a really good idea that had lang languished on Beacon Hill for just a number of years for no real good reason at all. And so I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad that we were able to get that over the finish line and get that done. What, what are your plans for the future in terms of, you've been so busy, is there any areas in which you'd like to concentrate on in the future? So we've got a lot more work to do. Mm -hmm. um, one is continuing to implement this wastewater piece and, right. and, and the billion dollars of support from the state that's going to mean real property tax savings. 
Uh, two, I think, meaningfully looking at reigning in housing costs. Uh, housing has just become profoundly expensive across the region. Uh, I had hoped that we would have taken up a housing production bill uh, last session. We didn't uh, get that done, and so that's something I'm eager to come back and to work mm -hmm. on. Uh, and then on a whole host of policy areas, whether it's you know support for older adults, we need to be vigilant on the opiate epidemic, uh, how do we have resiliency in a changing climate is just crucial. Um, you know, I'm really proud to have secured uh, 70 million in bond authorization, uh, including uh, major bills in economic development, uh, environmental resources, uh, capital improvements, and, and those are dollars that are flowing back here to Mashpee and, and, and all across the Cape and Islands District. Uh, so a lot of work to do, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited and, uh, to get back to work, and hopefully I'll have that opportunity if the, if the voters uh, send me back. Okay, in closing, um, what would you like to say to the voters out there, why they should vote for you uh, on November 6th? So, I've just been trying to keep my, my head down and work in a collaborative fashion. Uh, we have a bipartisan delegation here on the Cape and Islands District, and I work with every, every single one. So whether it's working with uh, Dave Vieira or Sarah Peake or Vinny DiMacito or Tim Whalen, uh, you know, the issues we face in the region are significant. Nine out of ten of the issues that I work on on a daily basis um, are not partisan ones, which is something that I find, you know, pretty refreshing, right, in this uh, yeah, sure in this pretty toxic national environment of our politics. Uh, so I've just been working really hard and tried to stay focused on the needs of Cape Codders, on the needs of Islanders, uh, and I hope that voters rec you know, recognize that, um, that support. I'm proud to have the, have the endorsement of the Cape Cod Times that just came out earlier this week. Um, you know, and, and so you know, just really want to ask voters uh, for their support, ask for them for their vote, either on November 6th or actually you can vote early right now. Um, every weekday, uh, Mashpee Town Hall is open 8.30 to 4.30, and you can vote early uh, and just get it out of the way. Okay. All right, I want to thank you for uh, coming to the studio today, and I wish you luck in your uh, re-election. Come on, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, and thank You're you welcome. to Mashpee TV for hosting us. And, uh, yeah, happy almost election day, and uh, good wishes. Thank you. Thank you.